was that a ghost of a boat? <laughs> I don't know. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Friday night. This is B and D Live, where a group of friends from high school attempt to play Dungeons and Dragons remotely by the internet. <laughs> I see Chris is already gone. Um, <laughs> with us, as always, we have Aaron as Agnes the Bard, Tim as Twizzard the Wizard, Stephen <laughs> as Finric the Monk, and Chris as Polias the Cleric. I am Sean, your ever faithful and humble DM, and this is B and D Live. Uh, let's have a little recap, shall we? Uh, let's see. Last session, it was uh, Sonny Dillick. Folks woke up in the Duchess. Uh, Agnes talked to Freddy, the errand boy at the Duchess. Uh, and he managed to get Agnes a somewhat decorative lead box, which masks most uh, of her amulet's glow. An uneasy, uh, reticent Fenric has a heavy breakfast to match his heavy heart. Turzer gets some hair whitening drinks to go. And the, uh, the Ateum, minus Polias, who was uh, either sleeping in or talking to Anne, we're not quite sure. Uh, you, got, uh, you folks headed over to Wimblecats. Uh, you got your stealth pouch and reset the compass to Falrith's blood. It points southeast. You also discussed the jobs that he has. Capture a magical beast from Tower Evath. Or recover, and or recover a powerful artifact guarded by a beast from Tower Rudlin. Uh, then you, you then start talking to random wizards, uh, doing a little recon. Twizzard has mixed results. Agnes uh, comes back with more intel about beasts and wizard duels uh, from an Evath pupil. Uh, but when Twizzard cuts a curry line, a fight sort of happens. Uh, but then you all scope out the entrance of the towers a bit more, discussing various strategies, how to use the body of the dead monk you have, how to use dimension doors, should we pretend to be new students, why do we have robes if we're new students, should we use dimensional door? We need a clever plan. And that's where we ended up. And at some point, Elias joined you. I forget when, but I think you're all together now. So yeah, it's still Dillick, it's still sunny, and it's around 1 p.m. What would you like to do? Let's form that clever plan. <laughs> Which I did not think about at all this past week. <laughs> well, that's good. You know, you know, you want, you want to save that for the screen, baby. Save that content. It's hot content. Yeah. Hot, hot, hot. Well, I do like the idea of um, maybe trying to frame wizards of either House Evath or House Rudlin in the um, in the death of a monk. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I do have him in my bag, and I need to get rid of him somehow. Mm -hmm. So we should just do that regardless of if there's right, anything well. in it for us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So as, um, as Lady Frostmane, I'm just going to kind of walk around, scope out, you know, the area and see if I could um, see maybe a good spot that is not very um, frequented by people that I might be able to dimensional door into and, uh, and drop off the, huh, the package thing. The package, yes. Um, maybe a place where uh, this package can be I guess hidden until I leave it. Tower loading docks. The tower loading docks. But they all need something to get stuff there. This guys need supplies. Yeah, but I mean, extra wands. We don't want something shit. that's going to be watched easily. We want something that's not going to be. 
I think an alleyway is probably going to be the best bet. Are these towers round, or are they like real big? Yes, they're 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 both round. Uh, it looks like Evath maybe around 10, 10 ish stories, and Rudland might be around nine nine ish stories. Evath's a little taller, uh, but they're both seem to be roughly the same diameter. Uh, now, uh, while they are round, the surrounding buildings, you know, there's sort of basically a little bit of leeway between them and the buildings around them. Uh, but there are, you know, normal square and rectangle shaped buildings around them. So there certainly are alleyways. Um, this uh, part of Wesleyville is sort of the, um, it's technically its name is Three Corners, but I believe Shady introduced it as Magic Town. Uh, there are a lot of wizard uh, shops that uh, sort of cater to wizards, so apothecaries, um, small shops that, uh, you know, make uh, metal and uh, various compounds, metal items and various compounds, uh, lenses, um, flasks, glass blowers, that sort of thing. Uh, there's a few, um, you know, you went to Womel's um, Tavern. Um, there are the normal... Uh, sort of, you know, shops that sell food, um, you know, a couple cafes. There's, of course, Wimblecat's House of Wonder, uh, Islad's Robbery, which you procure your eight robes from a while back. Um, there are no loading docks. Uh, Twizzard, if you made a, a jog around the towers, uh, you would notice that there are no windows lower down. Uh, the windows usually start around third floor or so, um, and there is no loading dock. Only the main, the main entrance on each. I have a question for you as a DM. Yeah. Um, if I was to have two creatures invisible, would they be able to see each other? Two creatures invisible. So, for example, me and Finric. Would he be able ah. to see me, and I see him, or no? No, no. Uh, unless you, unless you had like true seeing or some ability that. I think there's actually a spell called Sea Invisibility or something. Right, yeah, but I was no. thinking about getting that, but I went with Dimensional Door instead. It's oh, not why a... you go to the compass. All right, so then it really wouldn't make sense for more than one person to turn invisible because it's not like we could have a lookout that gives hand signals if both of them are invisible. Oh, but we could Sending Stone. I think we should all turn invisible. <laughs> Um, well, if I cast it at a level four, I can do one target in addition to each above level two. So level four means I could do three. I could do three people in this three, three total, including three, yourself? Including myself. So if I do me, then I could do an additional two. And anything that you're carrying and wearing also turns invisible. Can you do three separate from yourself and not yourself? Um, yeah, it it's, it's a creature that I touch, so okay. I don't have to be the one that's invisible. Because you can get an invitation as Lady Frostmane, and then we'll be, you know, we'll just be your unseen servants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we'll be so much more awesome than those crappy servants who couldn't even dig a proper grave. Okay, but I'm the one who does the dimensional door. So I have to go through the dimensional door, but I could bring someone else with me. Unless you guys just want to walk there. Well, we, you're just looking for a spot that's not too populated, right? To dump a body that will eventually, <laughs> hopefully, be found mm. by someone who's going to hopefully accuse the wizarding right. um, community of killing a monk on the wizarding side. So we could create a diversion too to help. I and mean, then we could use those, those squishy toys that we've got to go, I don't know, interfere with something. Everyone look that way and that, that, that helps a little bit. I mean, is there an alley? There's gotta be an alley somewhere, right? There's I mean, alleys. How close to, in all of magic? Yeah, there's alleys to be had. Let's just go find an alley, dump them in the alley. Alleys near oh. a round tower? Why is, um, why, why are they gonna think that a wizard did this? Because it's in it's in the magic area of town. The stab wounds are wand shaped. <laughs> no, yeah, but well, I mean, like, shouldn't we have something a little more uh, conclusively tying it to wizard? Otherwise, they could, you know, just go a different way with it. 
Wasn't he killed by wizarding? Wasn't he killed by magic missiles? He actually was. Uh, wait, 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 let me see. Uh, oh no, he was killed by. This, I was gonna say he was killed by my bare hands. Yeah, this yeah. is oh, the one that finished it. The one that was turned into the Mr. Sloppy or whatever you called him. Sloppy Joe. Sloppy, Sloppy Joe. Joe. Oh no! All right, so then it does look like it was. Well, can't we just magic missile him real quick? <laughs> Uh, we're just looking for burn marks, right? I mean, but here's the thing. Where are we going to do that? Wherever our... It's probably his back. Yeah. Oh, I mean, like, what does magic missile sound like? Is that like... Or is it just like a tiny little... doesn't even make a sound. If you're invisible, would your magic missiles be invisible too? <laughs> no. Good question, though. Your weapon would be... Although I think does attacking break it? I think attacking. It. Yeah, if you attack oh, or cast the spell. Oh, it's even if you cast the spell. So never mind. If you're invisible and you cast magic missile, you'll come out of it. Oh, so I can't even cast dimensional door. Well, I can cast dimensional, dimensional door, door and bring yeah. someone with me that's invisible. That is true. No, because I'm the one who casts invisibility, so it'd break. Or I'm just gonna. That... Can you make me invisible? I'm just gonna take this body around the corner to that alley over there and then yeah. I'm just going to dump them out and someone will find them and we'll see what happens. But then okay. but I won't be carrying this guy that I killed with my bare hands anymore and maybe that I'll feel... Uh, Do we, we at least want magic marks on him? So... Magic okay. marks? I mean, it's not hard to bring him somewhere and like hit him with a magic missile, right? And it's somewhere obvious. Right? I mean, did you hit him at all? At any point? Not that guy. I don't think so. No, because this is the one Fenric had knocked out Early on, you did threaten them with uh, some cooking tongs, but I don't think they left the mark. Who knows would leave a very distinctive mark. <laughs> Do I have everything in my bag to get doodling? Uh, stuff I never think to use. Mm. Fish fingers, nope. Just put the spoon that smells like cinnamon on him. That'll this corpse smells like cinnamon. That'll clinch it for, for sure. <laughs> Wizardry. Um, or I could leave um, Balra's underwear on him. <laughs> He's got wizard underwear. You could wrap him in a robe. Hide him underneath a black robe or something. We only bought enough robes for us, Aaron. But, <laughs> yeah, but that sort of disguises the fact that he's a monk. <laughs> but he's wearing his vestments underneath it. It's just that there'll be a robe over covering him until someone actually finds him underneath that robe. And then they'll realize it's a monk and not a wizard. I like the magic missile idea. I think we should just magic missile him and then uh, dump him. Then we're going to have to go somewhere where we can magic missile him in peace. Yeah, the, the dressing room of... Um... Snouts. Cool. While well, these guys talk, I walk over to the alley, and then if there's no one there, I'm just dumping his body out. Our body. <laughs> All right. Um, so you're looking. You're looking for a quiet alley. Uh, I, I watch as he walks away. I run over and I'm like, "Hold on, one moment." And then we just find. Um, I feel like I should just turn you invisible before, but not in front of everybody. Okay. All right, give me a perception check, Fenric, to see if you can find a good alley for this, for this, for this mischievousness. Can I give him some advantage? Sure. Yes, my please. my perception is very good. Well, so I have 17 plus seven. That beats mine. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, Agnes, you, you know, you guys have been standing around talking about this and in the back of your head, you know, your subconscious mind is sort of been analyzing which alley would be best for this. And, and you find, sure enough, uh, a little from where you were standing, there's sort of a cafe next to an apothecary. And if you go behind that alley or go between those buildings out there, uh, there's another sort of alley behind. Uh, and there are some uh, old crates, which maybe some produce came in at one point, but they've sort of been sitting out there. And there's also a, a, a weird sulfury smell in the air um, from maybe some of the stuff the apothecary has put out back. So do you Ooh, think you could probably... Cover the smell of decay. Yeah, the you, could, you could probably dump them there. 
if you if you work fairly quickly. And you want to bring your wand out and whistle him? Um. All right, you guys are back there. What are you doing? Sneak back. Um. So, does the magic missile make a sound? Ooh. Okay. Wait. Uh, the the whizzy really. wig drink makes you float like a foot in the air, right? Yes, I could do. I, have... Could I like force it down this guy's gullet? Would it do anything? Could we just leave a floating corpse in the? Uh... <laughs> That's clearly magical. That would be wizardy. Give it a try. Okay, I'm trying this. Yeah, worst case, we go get go back to the bar and get more. All right, so no, one... we just go, we just fuck off and go back to the bar just to have a drink. It's, I'm not coming back. <laughs> Sorry, what am I doing? Pouring, uh, Pouring I'm making you juice down a dead guy's throat. I'm making yeah. you invisible, so you oh, are now invisible. All right, Fenric's invisible. Okay, now that I'm invisible, yeah, I'm looking around again. Yeah, I'm hauling him out of the bag of holding. Okay, and then trying to force WYSIWYG down his gullet. All right. Uh, I'm going to say it works because it's such a good idea. So his body starts <laughs> to float a little bit. Okay. Now I'm gone. I'm, right. I'm back to the group. And right. I'm sending stoning them so I'm not this weird disembodied voice that's talking. Be like, hey, we got to go. I don't know where. Hey, guys. We should settle go. him or is he slowly adrift? Are, like you, are you following, Agnes? Right. Uh, you know what? Uh, he started floating and I didn't really I'm look probably back. walking in the opposite direction. I don't think I went back. Okay. I'm, I'm heading towards, I guess, the fountain. I don't know. I'm going to a different locale. Well, plans in motion. No stopping this now. Because I, really, <laughs> um, I can't really be a part of the group as Lady Frostmane. Oh, you think for us? No, it's not my, it's not my character. Maybe Gentleman Twizzard can accompany you. <laughs> Are we kidding? He doesn't exist. Alright, how do we force this to happen, or do we just sit and wait? Do we think it'll, like, are we impatient about this, or do we say, oh my goodness, look at that! Um, it's funny you should say that. Um, you see a uh, sort of harried merchant run out of the alley, and he sort of looks around at one of the city guard and flags him down, and they have a hurried conversation, and they go back into the alley. Uh-oh. Cool. I'm going to go to the fountain. Yeah. I'm going to go the other way. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm getting out of here, too. I'm going to have to go to the fountain, too. But nonchalantly. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bones as well? Yeah, he's coming, too. How long does... In I'm sending Sun. How long does invisibility last? Like, am I going to become visible suddenly somewhere? Um, up to an hour. As long oh, as I'm constantly... Up uh, as long as I'm concentrating, <laughs> yeah, as long as I'm concentrating, you can go for a full hour. Okay, great. And you can sending stone me if you want to stop being invisible. Gotcha. Then I'll just release the... Uh, Twizzard and Polias, as the sort of last to leave, you do hear a familiar whistle sound, um, the pattern of which you now realize is what calls the city guard... Not, not us this time. Well, I mean, it is, but they're not after us this time. Feels good. Feels good. All right, so Lady Frostmane was making her way to the fountain. Yep. And Twizzard and Bones and Fenric also. Uh, Flyus, <laughs> you head uh, the opposite direction. Uh, so where are, you, where are you looking to go? Are you trying to get back to... I don't know, where are, you, where are you going? I'll just go around the block or something, get out of the square. Okay. Yeah, I tried that too. I took a three hour tour of the city. Circle gets the square. <laughs> no, that's right. Uh, how long of a walk is it to Lady whatever Winter fell? Um, Norfell? Norfell. 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 That's it. Um, 20 minutes? 15? 20 yeah, minutes? Yeah, 15. Uh, maybe actually, probably 25. And so, if you, so the fountain's here, uh, and Lady Norfield is over here in the estates. Gotcha. Uh, these are the two towers right here. So if you're heading toward the fountain, you're actually heading away from her estate right now. Okay, well, once I get close to the fountain, maybe I'll just look for another alley and kind of see if there's a place that I might be able to come 
become visible again without attracting too much attention. Uh, in the immediate vicinity of the fountain, there is not actually. But if you you could hang back near some of the buildings, you'd still be maybe 100, 200 yards from the fountain. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. That okay. sounds good. Easy enough to do. Ooh, do we have the circus today? It's tomorrow. Oh, it's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Okay. Uh, hey, uh, so I'm going to send you Stone Agnes. Mm. Uh, can, can I be visible again? And I release the, uh, the spell. All right. You're visible again. Cool. Did you just show up in the middle of that wizard square? No, he was in the alley. Oh, okay. He was in Some the alley about 200 yards from the pen. Um, uh, Lady Frostman, you're nearing the fountain? You want to go right I'm up probably to looking for another magic person that I might be able to gather information about magical beasts. Sure. Red or black robes? Um, I think I'm going to continue with um, House e um, House Ro uh, yeah, Evath. Evath, the red robes. Like okay. The gnome that I talked to before, he was Evath, right? Um... Sounds free. Actually have that written down. That was wait, where is it? Ah, oh, uh, Agnes, no. Yeah, this is the one Twizzard talked to. I've got a lot of wizards now. I think Twizzard was wearing a black robe, so he was talking with students yeah. wearing black robes. Yeah, you I did. went to you the met, opposing... You met uh what's his name? Santa V. Santa V the changeable, yep. Changeable. Yeah, that was a red robe. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna seek out another red robe inquiring about um, magical beasts for my client who is collecting for a personal zoo. All right, and you're looking for a single red worm? Um, or, a group? Or, um, or a pair, a but pair. a small, small, small group, not, right. not like a large group of people. Give me, a, give me a perception check while I go retrieve a piece I dropped. 11. Yeah, you see, uh, you see a pair of red robed folk uh, by the edge of the fountain, and uh, you approach them. They seem to be in a conversation about some text, some uh, s debate over whether so and so was correct or so and so was correct. And, uh, I approach and say, "You appear to be very astute students." of magic. Would you happen to know anything about magical beasts that might be in the Wesleyville area? Are you talking about in the city of Wesleyville itself or in the surrounding mountain ranges? Well, uh, since I am looking to procure this beast, the closer the better. So if there are any in Wesleyville, that would be wonderful. And the, uh... Wizard who replied, she sort of looks over at her friend. Uh, he says, ah, uh, hmm, well, uh, I don't know of many stores that sell that sort of thing, but certainly there are many among us, and he sort of gives a knowing look to his partner, who can create magical beasts from other creatures. Um, is this magical beast you're looking for, is it a specific one? Uh, well, my client is looking for both beautiful and dangerous beasts uh, to have for their personal zoo. I'm not necessarily certain if a regular beast changed into a magical beast temporarily mm. is going to um, is going to fly. I see. Fair enough. Well, Though if it flies, that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it would be would be awesome. Well, there. Are... There are many beasts to be found in the wilds, and uh, some of our professors have been known to procure them for training. Perhaps you could talk to uh, Shogrin uh, about maybe buying it off them after they're done. Oh, Shogrin. Oh, that would be wonderful. And uh, where would I find Shogrin? Ah, sorry. I see you're... Uh, not familiar with the hierarchy of uh, Wizard's Tower. Um, 
It's Shogrin is a title, so it would be Shogrin uh, Diane Kovath uh, for, of course, Tower and House Evath. And uh, would uh, Shogrin Kovath be um, residing in the tower, or does um, Kovath have a another like a place that uh, she dwells in outside of school? Uh, she no, she would have a she would have a, a house somewhere. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Professors don't really make it a uh, habit make a habit of uh, telling the students where they reside. Though there have been some that have been followed, but I don't take part in that shenanigans. Sure oh, you don't, that, says her friend. That means that you are a very astute student. Would you know how I could make an appointment, maybe, with um, Shogren Kovath? I assume you could just, I don't know, go in and inquire with anyone on the first floor. I, it's not to really, to my knowledge, he sort of looks over at his fellow wizard and she's like yeah I, I don't know if don't know how that's normally done it sort of falls outside of our knowledge really oh so there's there I'm, I'm sure there's must be procedures for a, a non-student to enter into your towers I can't imagine I could just walk in um I mean you should be able to I, I can't imagine uh I mean you wouldn't be able to <laughs> well you could try to leave the first floor, but uh, I doubt you'd be successful. But no, I mean, I, I'm sure someone there will be, if you grab one of the professors, if they're having a, you know, lunch or something in the, uh, in the cafeteria, they could maybe direct you more than, than we are able to. Do the professors actually come out of the tower and have a walk or eat oh, their course, lunch outside? Well, I, I, I mean, Different professors do different things, I'm sure. But yes, everyone comes and goes from the tower, except perhaps Adept Evath. They, I don't think I recall ever seeing them outside the tower. But the Shogrin, I mean, she would attend various events around town. Um, you know, it's sort of a, uh, uh, sort of a almost nobility of, of Wesleyville. Both, both Shogrins are. Um, they make it a point to be seen around town, you know, doing good things, uh, making sure people aren't too worried about our sort of conjures a, uh, you know, a little uh, floating apple in his hand and like shoots off. Like, you know, people, people need to understand that magic can do good as well as evil. And, and we are the wizards that do good, of course. Oh, well, of course. All right, so thank you very much for this information. I am going to see about making an appointment uh, with uh, Shogren Kovath. Um, good luck in your search for your beast. Uh, yes, yes, it sounds very interesting. All right, I guess I slowly meander away from them. Do, 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 do. All right, um, just about that time you see uh... Yeah, you, you would have gotten there. Well, you would have gotten there a little after. Whatever. Fenric, Fenric's around. You see him. He's visible. I don't know if you guys are intentionally... No, we're t I'm not making... Uh, I, I see him out of the corner of my eye, but I'm not, like, running up to him and hugging him. Like, Fenric, where have you been? <laughs> <laughs> no! Go away! Go as you're away. doing that, as you're doing that, Twizzard and Mr. Bones walk out near you, too. Uh. Guys! Hey, what's up? Hey, we did it. We pulled it off. I, I, I start walking towards him and I do a complete whoop. <laughs> uh, I heard about these guys. They do polymorphs on people and cast grease. Don't want to be near them. Hey, we don't all do that. Where, oh, where'd Polias go? Standing stone to Polias. Polias, where'd you go? Behind uh, I'm making my, my way around the around the square. Uh, Plyus, give me a perception check. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, yeah, trouble. I have to perceive my dice. You click the screen. <laughs> Just click the screen. Or if you have D&D &D Beyond up. <laughs> oh, okay. It's D&D &D Beyond. I have to virtualize my dice. You got your sword, you got your staffs, and you got your invisible wand. 
Get with the 21st century. No, I kind of, I, I, I'll, I'll miss him like throwing, rolling <laughs> all the dice. dice. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I just clicked the screen somewhere. Oh, bottom uh, left. Bottom left, yeah. I don't know, man. Sounds, sounds like, sounds like, a, sounds like magic. Some new mage oh. spell. I don't know. Bottom left. Okay. Do I have to be in the campaigns first? Oh, you should have your character sheet up. Character sheet. <laughs> <laughs> This has been almost a year. <laughs> almost a year, Flyers. Yeah, we are closing in on our year anniversary. Getting there. I'm getting there. Uh, <laughs> all right. Character is Polias. All right. Looks like it's coming up. <laughs> and there's the dice button. Hey. You want the 20 sided die? The 20 sided die. It says rolling bones. You can also, uh, if you click it on the perception, you should, uh, it should roll and add the number, I think. Oh, well, now that's fancy. I haven't figured that out yet, so I'll just add it manually. All right, do it the old-fashioned way. So, perceptions plus five, so I got a 16. 16. Uh, you get the distinct impression that there is a city guard following you. Uh-oh. Oh. Why does this always happen to me? Why you, yeah. Um, did I, I don't remember, did, was I like me when, when, uh, I was taken by the guard last time? No. You were, you were, at first you were Culp, but Colt. then you Culp, the cafe owner. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And that's why they stopped you because there were two Culps. Right. And then I believe you took it off maybe inside... Of oh, the, the dressing room. Of the stuffy shack? No, I think that I I took it off, and then I took I put it back on to be one of the people that were in the choir thing. That's right, that's party. right. Yeah, the the drunk kids leaving the white white uh, bird. Yeah, so was I ever myself? No. Yeah, I, I, I guess you weren't. I don't know. Okay, cool. But cool. you do have, like, a powerful amulet on you. That's true. That's true. Although I wouldn't know if a guard would... Well, whatever. What color robe do I have again? Black? I believe, I believe you were I'm all in black, black robe. Yeah, you were wearing a black robe. And and who did we uh, who did we just put in there? He was... Well, we, we, we're in the black robe section now, or we're in the red robe section? They are all mixed in this area of the town. Oh, if you okay. were inside one of the towers, it may be only... I see. You notice someone's following you. No. I, I do. I got it. Okay. So I'm just going to um, uh, stop, I guess. Okay. And turn to, to see who's following me. All right. So you just sort of like blatantly look at this city guard? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Terribly sorry, sir. Were you uh, over uh, on the main street uh, a while back? Uh, yeah, I just came from there. Did you perhaps see anything untoward happen uh, near an apothecary there? Uh, I'm sorry, untoward? Shady business. Oh, in, in, in the square there? I, I don't think so. No, uh, no one acting strangely, perhaps running... Mm, no, no, I don't believe so. What's going on? Well, there is a body found. Oh my. Yes. So we are trying to track down anyone who is seen near there around the time, just to see if yeah, they had seen anything themselves. Yeah, I, I was just there. But you didn't notice anything. Uh, do you know anything about a ruckus around a curry cart? Something about uh, some, some wizards having a disagreement? Uh, yeah, I think I, I was over by a curry cart earlier, and there was, um, oh, something about, uh, getting curry before someone else or something like that. Hmm. Do you remember any, of, did you know any of the people involved, perhaps, fellow wizards like yourself? Uh, no, I don't believe so. Yep. No, I didn't. I didn't get a clear look at everyone, but uh, I don't believe that anyone there was uh, known to me. They weren't from House Rudland. From House Rudland. Hmm. 
Uh, boy, it was oh, such a long time ago. I believe this was, <laughs> this was earlier today, maybe 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. If, if I could remember what it was, I think that they may have been from House Rudland, oh. um, but definitely younger than me. I see, I see. All right, well, um, do uh, contact uh, City Guard if you remember anything, won't you? Oh, sure, of course. Right. Yeah, good luck with the search. Well, thank you. And he sort of turns around and goes away. Were they around then? I don't remember. <laughs> you're, well, first of all, you're... <laughs> you're wearing you're Rudless. Rudless. robes. Yeah, I know, but that's why I'm like, well, I don't even remember what robes they were wearing. So. <laughs> well, it was Twizzard. So he was wearing Rudlin robes. Yeah, but there were a bunch of other people he was talking to. Yes, that's true. Were they Rudlin too? Yes, they should have been. I think they were. Oh, okay. There you go. All right. Uh, meanwhile, so, uh, yeah, Fenric, Twizzard, Bones, you're all back together near the fountain. I'll just send him stone everyone and be like, hey, there, there's uh, some guard activity. Sounds like the, the plan is in motion. All right. We're leaving now. And I'll be like, pardon me, my bowels are in motion. Ooh. <laughs> what? <laughs> I have to go and find the ladies' room. In the game? <laughs> yes, in the game. <laughs> what, you don't think that my character ever uses the bathroom? Has no, I, I thought, I actually thought that you had to go to the bathroom in real life, so. <laughs> That was your odd way of saying I'm gonna be back in a minute. <laughs> no. Go in your no, I'm good, I'm good in real life, life, but I think I think my character is getting a little like anxious and yeah, 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 it's yeah. like maybe I should find a bathroom to use. Understood. So if you're if you're heading away from the fountain? Uh, uh I think I'm probably going to head to a place where there might be a bathroom, like uh, maybe a, a restaurant or a cafe or something. A cafe, yeah. I don't know how bath. Well, most of them are outhouses, right? Kind Ooh, of. We should hit a bar again. Maybe get some intel. I mean, uh, this is a city. Uh, this area, especially, is fairly well to do. The cafes would have a place inside um, to go. All right. So yeah, I'll go into. Uh, Pop into a little cafe. cafe. Yeah, yeah, there's there's one with sort of a uh, a flowering tree on its sign that you looks nice and you go in there and uh, there's a couple people just enjoying uh, some light drinks uh, and the woman behind the counter may, may I help you uh, yes um, do you have any croissants uh, I don't have a croissant I do have um, some wonderfully light uh, little biscuits and many different flavors of tea and she sort of gestures behind her and you see all these little jars lined up so, yes, um, may I please have some uh, tea and biscuit? Um, I guess I'll do um, an herbal tea, maybe something like a, a mint tea. And, uh, and the biscuits that you have, are they, do they come in sweet and savory or are they? There, there's a mix. Uh, are you looking for one in the particular? Oh, um, if maybe you have one that doesn't have too much of a flavor that I could maybe add jam to. Ah, certainly, yes. I, we certainly have plain biscuits, and uh, I do have uh, both grape and raspberry jam. Oh, raspberry, please. Uh, and do you have um, a, a chamber room I might be able to borrow? Uh, yes, yes. And she sort of gestures, and you see a, you see a door toward the back. Ooh. I had that way. All right, she's going <laughs> to start. I'm going to come in, too. This, this, uh, I can't tell what's going on, but I, I sense eating. <laughs> hey, Fenric, we should go get some snacks. Yeah. Mr. Bones, you stay outside. All right, where are you guys going? Same place. But you know, uh, Come give on, me, there's so many other places. Give me, you give me perception checks to see if you saw where she went, though, because she purposely walked away from you. Oh, okay, fine. Maybe we should go somewhere else. But still, I'm curious if I knew. 11. 19. Ooh. Yeah, Fenric, you, you saw her duck into it. It's around the corner from where you are now, but you could get there. Oh, whatever. Was it look like, is, is, there, is there space in it for like you know the three of us without look, it looking too like conspicuous? Oh, uh, I mean it's a it's a it's a it's on the smaller side. 
Uh, there's maybe four or so tables only, and one of them has uh, two black robed wizards uh, sort of sipping drinks. Um, as you, you know, so I guess you're if you're if you're looking at that, you're walking closer and taking a look in the window. Yeah. Um, you don't see uh, Lady Frostmane when you look in the window. Great. Well, let's grab a bite. All right. All right. You you enter. The woman behind cool. the counter says, "Ah, yes. Hello." Uh, Hi. Care for a drink? Perhaps a light snack? Oh, uh, that sounds great. Mm -hmm. um, so it's my friend uh, Twister and I, and uh, a third a third friend might be joining us. Uh, um, and that uh, large skeleton. Yeah. Oh, nothing for him. All right. Yeah. Okay. Very well. <laughs> um, sh sure. Take a seat. Uh, are, we, are you interested in a, a hot drink, a cold drink? Uh, well, snack? what's the house specialty? Mm. How specialty? I have many flavors of tea. It's not an inn. Do you have anything stronger we could put Darn in that right, not. Uh, I'm afraid I do not. What uh, about for an extra gold? Uh, I certainly would accept your money, dear sir, but I, I don't have any alcoholic drinks here. <laughs> what if you run next door to the other bar and get something uh, This is not a bar, sir. This is a tea room. Do you have anything and do you have anything in like a green tea? I do, yes. I'll have one of those and he'll have one of those. All right. Uh, yeah. uh, do you care for some uh, biscuits? We have sweet and savory. Oh, yes, biscuits. Yes, please. we'll have sweet and savory biscuits, please. Uh, okay. I'll I'll bring out a sampler plate. Thank you. Great. And um <laughs> we're going to setting stone polias to tell him where we're at. <laughs> I think I think I should uh, uh, lay low for a bit. I don't want to be um, caught with uh, um, Twizzard right now because uh, they're what looking. Oh, jo joining our reindeer games! Come on, have some tea and biscuits with us. Oh, so I, I do I do take a sip of my my white hair uh, alcohol. Now that I'm thinking of it, so I, yeah, I'm not it, the Twizzard you think I am, Polias. It had definitely worn off. So. As you oh, were you not white-haired before? I probably wasn't. It, it wears off after, uh, what did, I don't know what we said. Let's call did it. You, did you have the large bone? Man? Yeah. Let's call it one. Oh, yeah. Wait, I think he's, oh, I thought he was outside, but he might be inside. He, he's no, inside. When we were doing the truck, like they were asking about the, the, um, the incident at the truck. The cart. The cart. The cart. Oh. Were you cut in line? Oh. You probably had white hair. That was pretty early on in the in the morning. Well, but no, he was asking Mr. Bones, though. Yeah, it was Mr. Bones there. Yeah, Mr. Bones was definitely there. No, I don't think Mr. Bones was right next to you. Mr. Bones was probably closer to Wimblecats. Do we have a robe no, in our Mr. back? Like Mr. Mr. Bones? Mr. Bones was in a robe, but he was close no. to you, because I think you... Didn't you, like, threaten or say, come up, Mr. Bones, or something? Yeah, I, told, oh. I just told him to come up next to us. Yeah. Okay. Not threaten. I was going to offer him courage. Uh huh. That guy totally misunderstood the whole situation. I was trying to be nice. <laughs> okay. Uh, here's, so, here's Lady, what I'll do. Lady Frost, man, you come out of the restroom and you see, uh, you see these three, three bozos sitting at a table next to you. Oh, somebody to cast fireball in that bathroom. <laughs> I give a a, a, a very evil glance <laughs> in that general direction. <laughs> Uh, the uh, the woman walks over and uh, puts a tray of uh, some biscuits and your uh, tea uh, on your on your table, and she goes back and grabs another tray full of various assorted biscuits, brings it over to your folks' table, uh, along with the two green peas, and she walks back. Oh, well, this is the civilized. Hmm. Yes. Well, I'm going to I'm going to try to be as calm and collective as possible while drinking my tea, being a proper lady, mm -hmm. pinky finger up, mm -hmm. using the appropriate utensils to stir my tea. I will do the same. Spread jam on my biscuit. So I'm going to come join, but I'm going to um, duck in an alley and put the hat on. Ooh. All right. Who are we gonna be? Who yeah. should I be now? 
Be Twizzer. Be Twizzer. <laughs> be Agnes. Yeah. I'll be. I'll be. Um. Agnes. <laughs> I'll, I'll be that kid that I was last night. Oh, the drunk kid? Mm. Yeah, he was wearing a robe, right? Yes. Yeah, I'll be that one. All right. All right. Um, so you're heading toward the fountain. Yeah, but I ducked into an alley so no one could see me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, okay. that, that's fair. Uh, but yeah, you, you're, you're heading toward the fountain. You, you, you get to the fountain. What do you do? So... Now I'm like, hey guys, where was that uh, coffee shop? By the way, I'm, I'm uh, disguised. Mm. Second start of the left. Right. All right. So the morning. I, I go there. Uh, I, I uh, shoot. I, I tell him which way. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, Plyus, you see, uh, you see the uh, tea room with the. Uh, budding tree <clears throat> and just then um, one of the red road wizards uh, sort of turns toward uh, Mr. Bones and Fenric and Twizzard and says um why is that following you around what do you mean by that I mean that animated skeleton he is a steward He sort of turns back. Never been more insulted. <laughs> they sort of both like scoot their chairs noticeably to like face away from you. Just then, Polias walks in in a, in a black room. Uh, hi, um, can I interest you in some tea or some light snacks? Oh, yeah, I'll just have some of my friends. They're sitting over here. Oh, uh, all right. And uh, if, you, uh, if you could grab him a, a green tea as well. I'm sure he'd love it. It's delicious. Oh, All right. Certainly. Hey. What's up, yes? Yay. We're just we're just having a little tea party. We have both sweet and savory biscuits. Mm. Oh, that's more meat. You like the sweet? Yeah. I will eat a biscuit. Mm-hmm. Oh yes, I'm doing that too. A covered in jam, raspberry jam. <laughs> um. Oh, you know what? This makes me think of Sky. Can I send in stone, Sky? You can. Good time. Hey, Sky. She picks up. Uh, hello, Fenric. Any any word from our uh, mutual friend who's back on this plane? Yes. Um. Unfortunately, well, he is still here, and he is still thwarting my attempts to get an exact location. I apologize. That's okay. We we've, we've deduced that he is. Uh, I, I look at Wizard. Was it east, southeast, southeast? Yeah. Uh, back to Sky, uh, southeast of uh, Wesleyville, but we're not sure by by what measure. Uh, understood. Um, well, thankfully, Windbell is basically just south of you, so I feel a little comforted by that fact. Yeah. I'm trying to think if there's any place southeast, any other towns, or any any places he would. The year would go. Practically the entire continent of Centralia is southeast of you. Bummer. Touche. Not narrow it down, does it? Maybe he went there. But, uh, well, uh, that compass is uh, useful, though. You could perhaps. I mean, given. I, 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 you know, you could try to use it at least. Uh, it will keep you somewhat abreast of his location. Yes. Would you like Fair me enough. to continue to... Honestly, I think I'm probably going to do it anyway, uh, just for my own edification, but I will continue to uh, try his try his intellect every day, as it were, until until something happens. Either he comes here, he comes to you, or, uh, or I succeed, I suppose. Hopefully he won't come mm-hmm. here. Sounds but like a plan. I'll I, let I you have... Know oh, we, uh... you should, sorry, you should know that I have alerted Gregson and... Um, uh, Henry to the fact that uh, he is uh, back to some degree. Got it. Um, have you let Elsa know? Um, I admit I have not. Um, while we did have one cordial conversation, I haven't made a habit. I could try. Uh, is, do you think it's important that she knows? I, I think... Um... 
I, I think she would appreciate hearing it now rather than hearing it later. I could tell her. If you prefer, Agnes could tell her. Perhaps that would be better. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, you guys are linked to her settings, then, right? To yeah. Elsa's. At least I am. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, I think it might have been only one of you. That makes sense. All right. Well, talk later. Take care. Take care. Uh, I guess I send next to Agnes. Sure. At the um, table. At the table next to you. Well, no, but we don't know each other. Oh, I know. Yeah. I know. I, I so love it. So then, I guess I'll use this time while I'm, you know, sipping tea and eating in in peace and quiet. Uh, to have a mental conversation with Elsa if she picks up on the other line. All right, she does. She does pick up. Oh, Elsa, um, we have we have been running amok in Wesleyville, as I'm sure you could um, could uh, imagine. But Falrith has returned to the plane. Oh. That is disturbing news. Uh, but he is not in Wesleyville? Well, according to um, the compass that we got from Sky Shop, uh, that was originally pointing to Twizzard, mm. uh, is now pointing to Falrith because we did have some of his blood and we got the oh. compass reset. Well, that's he quite is clever of south, you. southeast of uh, Wesleyville, so. Right. We don't know exactly where in Centralia he is, but southeast of here. All right, I will do what I can here to keep a lookout for him. Thank you for the heads up, as it were. And Elsa, uh, would you have any uh, suggestions on how we could maybe <laughs> um, minimize uh, the presence of our amulets? I have put mine into a lead box, and Finric has put his into a, um, a pouch that is shielded. Yes, there are enchantments. Uh, basically, they sort of nullify uh, the magic um, that is within. If, that were, if you had a pouch that was inscribed with that, um, it may be able to contain the magic and thus shield it from prying eyes. Um, it's worth a try. I had not thought of that danger. I apologize. Now, would you happen to know of um, a particular wizard known as Wimblecat, a tabaxi? Is he still alive? Oh, alive and well, doing backflips and front flips and being oh so charming. He is an odd fellow, but uh, I have found him to be trustworthy in our past interactions. Do you know what his eye can do? Ah, yes, that is an eye of true seeing. And is that something that is replacing his real eye, or is it just on top of his real eye? No, it is replacing it. I believe there's some story involving a wyvern, uh, but I don't know all the details. Okay. Well, that is quite interesting. Um, he was able to see which um, entity uh, Finistol is connected to as a warlock. Hmm, intriguing. Perhaps she has an aura about her could be linked to who she has a pact with. Uh, it does stand to reason that he may be able to perceive that. Though the exact uh, way he has enchanted his replacement eye is, is unknown to me. Okay. It does not All seem right. out of the realm of possibility though. All right, well, we will continue to keep you posted. Um, any news about um, the, uh, the, Golding the Galdingers? Is Lily still practicing her, uh, her fighting skills with Henry? And is 
uh, Sir Galdinger working on his keep? Uh, uh, to my knowledge, yes. Uh, he is employing a large amount of the townsfolk in repairing it. Uh, so I suppose that's a good thing. Does he know the full extent of what lies beneath his keep? No, I don't. I, he knows. He knows that there was a secret area, but I don't know. Oh, are you going to butt in? I'm just going to wave to across the cafe and try to get. Agnes's attention. <laughs> which I assume that I've done. Um, if you're going to talk to Elsa, ask her about our ship. Agnes, are, are you there, Agnes? Or... Yes, no, of course, Finric is trying to also get my attention. Um, Galdinger does seem to know quite a bit about his keep, at least now. Um, I don't know how far he's explored but he does know that there was um, an additional room behind um, behind the main, I guess, chamber room. Hmm. But apart from that, I think it's just the cells that he's aware of. Interesting. It does, I suppose, concern me if he and his workers are doing anything to that ritual room. Well, maybe you should visit and put some kind of charm spell to kind of hide it from unknowing eyes. I will see what I can do. I mean, it was it was magic darkness that led into that area, so they might not even head in there because they wouldn't be able to see anything. Indeed. All right. Um, I will look into it. And then uh, Fenric is curious if you have happened to hear of our ship. It should be ready, and um, Nate and Jenkins are supposed to be the caretakers of it while we are away. I know nothing of that, but I... I my cat has noticed more out-of-towners walking around lately. Okay. Well, I did tell the Nate and Jenkins if they needed to contact um, us that they could see either Sky or yourself or even uh, Lily or Sir Galdinger. All right. I'm sorry, what was that last part again? You cut out for a moment. Oh. <laughs> no, just that if Nate and Jenkins needed to uh, contact us, that there were multiple people in Wesleyville, ah. such as yourself, Sky, and the Goldingers, that they could talk to in order to contact us. Yeah, they have not contacted me yet, but uh, I will be more pleasant than I normally would if I see them. Oh, they, they have been good people and I do feel bad about what we did to their boat. Understood. All right, we'll keep in touch. Check you later. Uh, yes, I check you later as well. I believe that it's a, um, it's a chess term. Hmm. You know, checkmate, check you later. All right. <laughs> Solid. Just uh, trying to put D&D &D lingo. <laughs> <laughs> ah. um, yeah, that, that's, uh, that all happens uh, via Sending Stone. So you've sort of just been staring, staring off into well, space as I've you sip your tea. Well, I've been sipping tea and having little nibbles of cake or a biscuit with jam. Perfect, perfect. Um, after a while, these two folks uh, pay their tab. And leave, and you've got the place to yourself. Oh yeah. I mean, I we need to go see the Galdinger estate about getting some money, right? We need to see the Parliament building for acquiring 
land ownership title permission. And then we need to practice for, well, Mr. Twizzard, myself, and Finistral should probably practice. Practice? I'm waking everything. We need to practice. Just do it how it happened. But I would like to go over to Lady Norfolk's house to start, you know, setting it up and... And at least telling her that there might be a gnome looking for me as Lady Frostmane. Why are we getting more money from Goldinger? Because we helped him out and we bought Lily her dagger and her armor. Oh, he said he'd reimburse all that? Yes. Yeah, we also got her... Um... Part of the uh, some other stuff, yeah. <laughs> Lots of other things we also got. Food. She had a lot of food. Mm -hmm. so oh, she, she paid. She paid for that. She paid for her own food. Yeah, well, I saw her eating food. She pay for it, so. Yes, yeah, so she totally had some of our snacks. Yep. Yeah, yeah. mm -hmm. Well, I believe that he gave us a note for like a significant amount of gold. I think it was like maybe even a thousand. Okay. You have to tell us that. That's pretty good. Good start. Hmm. Should we go see one of those two? Well, I would probably, I would probably head back to um. Because I don't to really... the Duchess first, so that I could yeah. change back into Agnes. I don't know what else we could. I think we've caused enough trouble around these towers. Like, I don't know how else to get inside these places except just waltzed in the front door, which apparently we could do, and then. Wing it from there. Well, I'm going to I'm going to see about making an appointment with uh, show the Shogun Shogun uh, Kovath. Mm -hmm. All right. Alternately, we could just go back to Windbell and check on our boat. <laughs> Are we not still planning on going up to uh, the knowledge place? The, the big library. library? <laughs> or, I mean, we've only been in in Wesleyville for like what two and a half days. That's pretty much all of Dalk. We got there on <laughs> at least, the Gaul. At least three Dalks worth of time. We've been there one day, and each day was well, three days, and each day was Dalk. Uh, Fenric, your sending stone buzzes. Oh, hey, it's Fenric. Yes, Fenric. This is Finistel. I hey. would like to meet Whoa. up with you folks. Uh, what? Where are you? Oh, good. Um, you know, just people trying to kill us. Not usual. That does sound usual for you, yes. I believe she asked where. Where are you? Not where? Where, where are, are we? Sorry, we're at the tea place. And, and uh, tea people aren't trying place. to kill us here, just generally. Yeah, the tea place is actually cool. lovely. She where is look the look tea look. place? It's a large city, Fenric. Oh yeah, it's by the um, it's by the fountain. Ah, I see. Three corner. Uh, are you going to be there long? Uh, sure, we can be here for a little bit. I think Agnes was going to go back to the Duchess, but um, the rest of us can hang back. Or what would what, what's up? Well, I would like to talk to you all at once, if possible. Okay, let me. Um, I, I'm I'm sure we can persuade Agnes to to hang back for a bit. Well, I could also we'll, meet we'll you at the Duchess. I am equidistant, as they say. Would you like to meet at the Duchess? Uh, hang on one second. Uh, hey, hey, uh, uh Lady uh, Frost. <laughs> Man. I think that's actually correct. <laughs> I I peer over. I'm like, do I know you? Uh, you know I uh. Hang on. <laughs> I send, nice sending stone. Nice sending stone, Agnes, without hanging up on. <laughs> can I tell, or can I tell Twister that sending stone, Agnes? Whisper to me, I'll sending stone, Agnes. Okay, you just need to ha get Agnes to stay here because Finistel is going to meet us here and go over the plan. That makes more sense than like us all going over to the Duchess for her to meet. All right, I send stone yeah. that to Agnes. Okay, Finistel, meet us here. 
Oh, and then I send back to um, Mr. Twizzard. Oh, hold on, she's saying something. Mr. Twizzard, why would Finistra want to talk to all of us in in this public place when we have rooms at the Duchess where we could be in private? Oh, she thinks Finistra's going to take us out or something. She's she's worried. No. Finistel, change of plans. Uh, yes, Finric. Uh, we'll see you at the Duchess. All right. All right. So I am going to pocket some biscuits. <laughs> All right. And I guess maybe we get the check. Oh, so guys, uh, Finistel, I guess, has something to tell us, and she wants to talk to us all at once. Right. So we'll meet her at the Duchess. Uh, yeah, so uh, you guys had... Did Mr. Bones have a tea? No. All right. No, so. the only drinks I've been getting for him now is, like, milk or Bones of Glory. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be, uh, call it two silver for uh, you guys and uh, maybe uh, seven or so copper for you, Agnes. Okay. All right, well, I'll hand over uh, an Electrum. All right. I will, wait, what is an Electrum? Five silver? Yeah. Oh, you tipped. Oh, yeah, great. I tipped. Oh, okay. All good. All right. Uh, I'll get next one. I'll get first round of touches. We'll get the next tea and biscuits. All right, so you guys head out. Is it your intention to head to the Duchess then? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Do we collect Shady as well? Should he hear this? Who? Shady. Shady Baggins. Uh, I mean, you can you can keep your eyes out for him as you leave Magic Town. <laughs> All right. So as we walk, I go, "Here, Shady." Come on, Where are you? Uh, let's see. Are you guys gonna head? Probably the most. Yeah, you probably go the most direct route. I think I'm going to call a uh, a taxi service. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is that fancy. I am Lady Frostmane. You are Lady Frostmane. You gotta, you gotta play the part. <laughs> Um, well, maybe I'll teleport. Thirty feet. Thirty feet. <laughs> Repeatedly. <laughs> I could just do it once, and then I have to sleep overnight. <laughs> uh, let's see. How much would that cost? I don't know. I think in the DM book they did have suggestions yeah, about think, how much. I think you're right. All right, we'll, we'll figure that out. But uh, yeah, all of you head back various means to the Duchess. Um, if you want to look for Shady, give me give me some perception check. Do we want Shady? No, not really. I don't know. I don't know how much it costs. It costs something. It's probably not that much. Yeah, I think that it was it was one of those things somewhere between, you know, a couple copper and a silver, depending on how far you travel. Exactly, yeah. Let's just call it another seven copper. Okay. All right, so you guys all head back to the Duchess. Various means. Uh, are you gathering in the uh, common area or heading up to your rooms? Oh, it needs to be a secret meeting, right? Yeah, I can spend, I probably got there before anyone else just because of my Carriage. taxi. Yep. So I probably used that extra time. Um, I could set up a Lehman tiny hut. Doesn't someone have the cone of silence or something? No, I think it's like Zone of Truth or something. I think we decided that it doesn't block sound, but it would be, you know, you could just keep your voices down, but it would, it would block visual. Yeah. I just like having that extra protection of only people that I invite in are yeah, allowed sure. in. All right, so when the guys get there, they go up to your room. Sure. Sure. And, we're, uh, we're alone in the room now. And Finistel arrives around the same time. 
Yeah, I think we're all in the ladies' room. It smells okay. nice. If we're the only ones in there, I can take off the hat now. Yeah, and I've changed out of my frost mane disguise. Oh, okay. Noted. All right, here you all are inside the hut. Here's Mr. Bones standing outside. <laughs> oh. Ah, uh, yes, well, uh, I trust that your uh, research throughout uh, Wesleyville has been fruitful. Uh, what? <laughs> Maybe. We found out some stuff. It depends Two on what you consider fruitful. All right. Shall I go first, then? Go for it. Well, uh, I revisited the uh, archives of the Academy. Um, I first found a uh, note of the healing properties of the water uh, there, and um, sort of vague references to the, to the darkness of Lull. So I figured there might have been something I might have missed. Um, and after uh, a long night, which uh, I did find um, something um, in a, another children's rhyme, uh, believe it or not. Um, and she sort of brings out this notebook and she opens it. Woe to the youngling who has nothing to bring. They wander the wood no way home if they could. A cave kept hidden, no answers forgiven. Dark animals roam, sent by tablet as tome, to take what is theirs, all younglings beware. Now I think, bear with me, I think that the cave kept hidden is perhaps one of the caves with a ritual room. Uh, I'm not sure uh, of the tablet as tome, however, Dark animals roaming could be a reference to the transformations made by the amulet. Um, I'm not 100% sure about any of this, but I figured since we're all pooling our information now, correct? She sort of looks expectantly around you. Yes? Yes. Well, anyway, what do you think? I mean, that definitely sounds very plausible even if it is coming from a, a children's rhyme. They often, you know, use rhymes for children so that children learn at an early age about things that they might not understand. Yes, exactly. Like, don't go in any caves where a ritualistic cult may be, for instance. Mm -hmm. Or Rub-a-Dub-Dub, -dub, Three Men in a Tub. I, I haven't heard that one. What is, uh, what is the meaning behind that? Apparently, it is telling the local people of some fair that is coming by that has naked ladies really? for viewing. Yes, yes. Interesting. And rub a dub dub is essentially saying, ooh. Wonderful. I'm just gonna write that one down. Yeah. <laughs> um, in a tub, who'd you think they'd be? Butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. All of them knaves, the three. Interesting. So they were all seeking to see the naked ladies. Yes, yes. And it's quite a uh, taboo. However, it was also very acceptable at the same time. It's acceptable to sneak and watch the naked ladies? Well, it was one of those things where, you know, you grow up hearing or learning through the the children's rhyme that it is a socially frowned upon thing but as you get older <coughs> hey Everyone's doing some it. people just want to see naked ladies i suppose they do so i'm dying to hear what did you folks all find out we framed uh, some wizards for murder you you framed some wizards for murder. Yeah, like we're keeping that under wraps. Oh, I thought we were all being honest. We found, yeah, or I should on. say, I found that the um, Evath Tower is using 
magical beasts for dueling purposes with the students. They claim that it is, you know, to prepare the students, but I don't know if that's really what's going on. Interesting. You would think that we would have found out more about the amulets, but we did not. We got very sidetracked. I see. Mostly due to Mr. Twizzard's uh, interactions with other wizards. I was investigating, trying to gain insight to these ghoul-like cults. Interesting. Well, uh... Cult-like schools. Cult-like schools? Cult-like schools. Any word of, uh... The, Rhyme mentions a, a, a tablet as a tome, and I believe it was tome. Uh, my translation skills aren't flawless, but I believe it was tome instead of tomb. Um, but a tablet. Any, any what mentions? was the? What were you translating from? Ah, what was I translating from? Abyssal. No, that oh. wouldn't. That makes no sense. That would. I be don't that. know abyssal. No, 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 no. It wouldn't be abyssal. Uh, it would be, what would it be? It would be, uh... uh... Didn't you say it was, like, deep speech? Come on, Ice Toad. <laughs> it's definitely not Ice Toad. No, but this would be the children's rhyme. So it would be, uh, it would be probably ancient Elvish. Sylvan? Yeah, ancient Sylvan. Um, well, I figured that's why we were going to the, the library. Uh, to, to find out more about about what we needed for these amulets, but no, not not sure of what that particular rhyme is is referring to when you when you say tome. Mm. Mm. In the ritual room, because it sounds like from the little information that's there, it could. It could refer to one of the ones we've already been to, or possibly, I'm assuming the last amulet is somewhere at yeah, a ritual. Like that. Yeah. And all the ones we've seen so far have been cave like. Yeah. Hmm. So maybe it doesn't matter which cave, or maybe it does matter which cave. If that's hmm. the case, then. I don't know if we would need more information as to which cave. They said well hidden, but I'm pretty certain that <laughs> the ones have been pretty well hidden. Yeah. Hmm. Indeed. Except for that first one in um, outside of, of Fellweather Glen. That one wasn't as well hidden if a little, little kid found it. Interesting. Alright. So... Well, and then regardless of the library, we have our obligations here. You guys have your obligations to Lady Nor... Norfolk Lewin. Or as Mr. Twizzer calls her, Norfolk, Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> yes, something I'm sure she finds endearing. I don't even think she understands that reference. If you do. If you do. Uh, yeah. Oh, we told you about Falrath. I told you about Falrath. Yes. 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 Did you? Yeah, you did, right? Not today, yeah. but last session, I think. Uh, On, yes. Uh, any any more news about uh, his aware, uh, whereabouts? Uh, I think we'll find him. I think we should go nip this in the bud before it gets too powerful. He's southeast of here. Mm -hmm. We know that. Hmm. We need a quick way to travel if we're going to find him. Well, we got horses. Some of us have ponies. <laughs> right, maybe we should see if Sky can triangulate a better location other than he's on this plane and we could do better than he's southeast of here. Otherwise, we could just head southeast and we could keep traveling and traveling and traveling and then he'll move and maybe we're just chasing him. 
And I'm sure we'll run into other adventures. However, it's it's kind of like trouble does seem to find you. Yeah. Yeah, I have a feeling that it's not just trouble finding us, but sometimes we go out looking for it. Every Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> um, we uh, we need a map. We need a good map of Centralia. And then maybe we can use the compass. We can triangulate ourselves. We, we, we ourselves can triangulate Falrith if we move... You know, if we travel far enough. Didn't you? Did you guys get a map from Elsa? Yeah, we have a map from um, from um, Olivia's bookshop. Who has Perfect. It? I think we each have a copy. Oh, I didn't put it in my inventory. How far do you think we'd have to travel east and west to, to figure out how how far south he is? Um. Well, it depends on how we. Um, how, I guess, detailed the compasses in terms of, let's say, degree markings right. from southeast and, and west. I mean, because essentially what we're doing is a parallax, and we're assuming that Falrith is not really moving from his location, and That's... that if he does, that he's far enough away that any motion is negligible. Right. Physics! So, ideally, we'd want something that moves relatively quick in different distances so that we can do it, like, within an hour or something and triangulate. All right. Well, you, you're, um, your pseudo-dragon should be able to travel, what is it, 60 feet per site or for per round? But I think it has to be within 100 feet of me. Yeah, so it can only really go as far as you can. Right. So that limitation kind of stinks. Other than that, I would say... Well, you... Maybe tomorrow... Is tomorrow the event? Yes. yes. Maybe while well, you guys do the event, I can grab the compass and I'll just head out of town and I'll just go a few hours. Yeah, I'll go south. with you. Okay. I'm not doing the event either. You can come to the event. You guys are more than welcome to come to the event. I'm sure that those wonderful cupcakes will be there. Yeah. Or, I mean, we could do it now. Do we have time now? It's only, like, what, 2 o'clock? 2.30? Yeah, it's probably 2.33. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's go grab some of our fast horses and, and see how much we can triangulate. Cool. Yeah, at least we can get a sense of, like, if it's if it's moving the, ne- the needle at all. Mm-hmm. We'll get a sense of if he's closer or significantly further away. Yeah, that's a good idea. So your your horses are still stabled at um, the Leowin Estate. So you you, you, could head, you could head over there. It's like a five minute walk. Yeah, let's do it. Cool. And while we're there, I guess um, I will talk with uh, Lady Norfolk Leowin about someone possibly coming to look for or sending a message about contacting Lady Frostmane and that is a alter ego of mine uh, alright so you guys head over to the Leowin Estate uh, do you go yeah so, so you're, you're going inside Agnes yeah I'm going to go inside I'll talk with her maybe start planning out the uh the room or the space that we'll need for our performance. All Little right. planning. And you guys are just going straight to the stable or are you going inside? Uh, uh, while, you, while you're walking over there, Finnis, I was like, was I supposed to be a part of this charade? Oh, well, we were hoping that maybe you could add um, some of your magical abilities to the special effects. Not that you would need to perform, but be, you know, more of a, a technical aspect of it. I think I could do that very well. All right. Wizard? So... Oh, what's up? Well, considering that Twizzard and I have the slower 
uh, be subverting. Um, maybe it should just be the ones that can travel fast that go out. Otherwise, we'll be keeping you from your fastest pace. Yeah, I'm pretty okay, cool. we'll, we'll see you this evening back at the Duchess. Sounds good. You can always sending stone. But don't you have a door of, of holding or what is it called? I have a dimensional door, but that's that's like 500 feet. So it's not like, and I can, oh, it's a spell, so. So you can only do it once or? I can only do it as many times as I have spell slots. Right. How, and, so, how fast are our horses? Uh, you can go uh, six miles per hour at a normal pace, but you could push it. Uh, if you're only going for two hours, like if you wanted to go, you could probably go nine miles down, nine miles back. Per hour. In an hour. Okay. If you go more than okay. three hours. I mean, now. if it's like two o'clock now and we just want to be back for dinner, like we can, can ride for a few hours and kind of see yeah. where it. Yeah, let's do it. Cool. All right. Um, and so we'll grab the compass. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. Is it in the back? I have it. So I will I will temporarily pass it over because I'm not going to remove it from my inventory right now. <laughs> okay. Fair. All right. So you guys. Well, I guess should we take note of its heading now? Right. Well, let's let's get a reading. So the compass yeah. has marked on it uh, cardinal and ordinal directions. So basically, north, south, east, west, northwest, southwest, southeast, southwest. Uh, and it's bearing uh, just, I would say it is bearing just, I would say if you had the, it would say uh, it is um, south, east by east. So it'll mark that direction on the map? Yeah, you can mark that direction on the map. And then, well, so it's it's southeast by east, so we should head. So in other words, it's between southeast and east. So we should head between. So southeast by east, yeah. So we should head either southeast or east, I guess. Well, if we're just heading towards it, that won't change the direction. We actually need to head like. Perpendicular. I would think like south or southwest. Yeah. Right. Perpendicular. Okay. Yeah. There are two main roads that leave Wesleyville. Uh, one heads uh, basically due west toward Flanlin, uh, and one heads uh, basically due south, which is the one you came up. Let's go south. Yeah. All right. So you guys mount up and uh, head um, south. Oh. Real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, it, so there's no more specific thing that, that it's given us other than like somewhere roughly in the southeast by east thing like there's no other indices or indications so is it in 16th uh give me an investigation check if you want to uh seventeen. Seventeen. um Yeah, no, it, it's pretty much, it's, it's got the main, it's got cardinal and ordinal marked. Um, mm -hmm. And you're, yeah, you're just sort of like. Just points. Point is, there, is there anything that I could mark it with? I mean, sure, you could mark it with anything you want. Does anyone have like some sort of. Uh, I mean, it's I got a, know, it's got a glass, bend? it's got a glass front or, or you know, sort of. Enclosure, you could try to mark on that with something sharp. I don't know. I don't oh, think I want to do that. I think I, I was thinking more. Um, why, don't, why don't you just count something the... that would be? Removable. I probably have. I probably have something in my disguise kit. Yeah, definitely, like some grease paint or something. Well, uh -huh. instead of marking the thing, though, why don't we just count the number of divots? Like it has divots. As, as uh, like, it's only got the eight. That's the. Does it have anything to, to show us like between south and, and west or south and southwest or? No, but you could you could mark it out yourself and try okay. to remember. Yeah. All right. So we need something to mark it. Up. Okay. Got it. Hi, Miss. Could we borrow some grease paint? 
You could have asked me back when we were at the Duchess. Your finest eyeliner. <laughs> uh, how about Heather? I'm sure. Uh, well, you're. Are, are you at the stable still? There, there. Agnes is inside with Finistel talking to them. Maybe you could just burn uh, a piece of wood and use the charcoal. That rubs off, though. Pretty. It's not meant to be permanent. This is my compass now. Oh, you know what? I have soap. 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 Soap it is. A little, All right. a little you don't line use of candle soap. wax. Horse manure. Especially if you have a candle that has color to it. Horse manure. I All have right. soap. <laughs> um, soap gonna stay on there? Uh, I think I would think so, like unless it rains. All right. I, uh, and so you also you I, you I open, said to Agnes, right? Is that so, okay if I put soap on a little bit of soap on the compass to mark it? Uh, yeah, that should be okay. I mean it. All right. All right. So you up. you open the compass uh, and you try to effectively finely mark uh, where the needle is um, pointing so you can tell whether it, you know and I'd say uh, just for fun give me a sleight of hand to see how fine your your soap mark is 24 <laughs> oh man that is a that's like yeah that's like to the millimeter I mean that is a you nope. really you really get the You're end you you get the edge very thin and you like make a very precise it's looking good it's looking well marked right on well marked all right uh i guess we ride all right you guys ride out twizzard you're gonna stay at the state i guess so yeah because your pony is too small to oh i'm so slow off right. my pony in on it so you and mr bones walk in and join uh join the others oh great Heather. Well, we can practice. Heather we ready. can do a um, a dry run where we don't necessarily cast the spells, but we plan which spells we're going to use. Okay. Oh, very exciting! Can I watch? Oh, or well, wait, maybe I, maybe I want to be surprised though. Okay, yeah, uh, surprise me tomorrow. Heather, well, you, you won't watch. See it with no. magic, What's so that? it'll still be a surprise tomorrow. No, no, That's I want to be fully you. surprised. Heather, yeah, okay. you see through their needs, please. Uh, and I will, I will retire to the sitting room. Uh, oh, I'm so excited. You know, a lot of people have replied. There is a lot and a lot of excitement going on. Did you know, I have it on good authority, that both house showgrins will be there? Oh, I was just about to ask you if you had invited them. Oh, really? Of course, of course. I heard that they are like the nobility of the um, magic houses. Well, I mean, certainly they're not true nobility, but yes, no. yes. In the wizarding world, I believe that is, a, is an apt metaphor. Okay, wonderful. Um, now, uh, there might be a particular wizard who might be calling on you to get in contact with a Lady Frostmane. Uh, just so you are aware, that is my alter ego. I am a procurer of goods and antique items and specialty items for rich clients. Um, I don't, I don't actually do that. I just use that as a way to gather information. So if someone happens to be looking for Lady Frostmane, please just find a way of contacting me if I'm in the area. Otherwise, you could just say that I have left Wesleyville for the time being. Agnes, I am enthralled by your intrigue. I will absolutely do that. Did you hear all that? Did you hear all that, Heather? Yes, I heard it. Wonderful, wonderful. We're a part of something big here, Heather. <laughs> oh, Heather, come and help us. All right, so... Uh... <laughs> so you guys sort of go uh, into the uh, sort of banquet room uh, with Heather and Twizzard and Mr. Bones and Finistel. And uh, Heather sort of looks at you, Agnes, and she says, um, will you be requiring more room for your show? Um, I think that we'll just need enough space really for me um, to play. And then Mr. Bones here is going to be playing the mummy. Hmm. I see. Uh, and uh, Mr. Twizzard here is going to, of course, be playing Mr. Twizzard. 
one of the Ateum and hero of the story. One of the heroes of the story. Yes, one of them. And um, I will be playing and narrating, essentially, the Battle of the Ateum, which you have heard. I see, I Am see. Am I just acting it out silently? Well, um... um should... There might be parts in the song where I, I just play music, and if you want to say a couple things like, I cast Fireball! And and you have prestigation or something like that. I won't say it, I'll just do it. No, 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 no. We don't want actual fireballs. The two heads of the magical people, they can take it. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I don't know if the room would take it, though, Twizzard. But yeah. I, I can Is show you something so... you can work on, Heather, uh, fireproof this room? Lady Norfolk does like to uh, entertain. So we have the sort of stage area over here uh, while the banquet table is out. But we do also uh, have ball dancing occasionally. And for that, we have a different uh, setup. And she sort of motions with her hands and the chairs uh, slide away from the table and against the wall. And the table itself seems to disappear into the floor, effectively making the whole room wide open. If you would prefer, we could uh, do your performance in this configuration? Really, we should do it outside. Well, I'm trying to, I mean, we have participated in um, in some duels where there was uh, this bubble of protection. So everything, you could see through it, but the magical spells were not able to exit. Ah. Yes, I, I have I have heard of that. I am unfortunately not, uh, I have not studied enough to be able to perform that uh, particular spell. Okay. There's a, well, a sort of we'll anti-magic spells... field, uh, but I unfortunately lack that knowledge. Yeah, I only have Lehman's Tiny Hut as well, so. We could perhaps try to invite a wizard that would. There are some ones of slight disrepute that have been known to uh, do that for a cost. No, we'll just, we'll, it, we won't use a real fireball. Don't worry about that. Right, Mr. Twizzard? I mean, what am I going to do? Conjure a fake fireball and shoot it like a basketball at Mr. Bones? <laughs> I, I smell a lot of cheese in this show. Well, it's not meant to be the real thing. It's meant to be a performance. It's a circus performance. But the nobles aren't going to go, oh. They're going to be like, oh, okay, that guy's shooting hoops with them. Star we're, telling, we're telling a story. It's it's not even, it's like one of those lame reenactments that you see on, on a um, documentary or something. All right. I'm casting something real at some point. I'm not going to tell anyone when I'm going to do it. <laughs> ah, Finistel pipes up. I can uh, I can create fire, uh, a bonfire, as it were, um, if need be. So perhaps you could send an illusion through the air, Mr. Twizzard, and I could create a, a small localized fire uh, right around Mr. Bones. Is he? Mm, that would be. That would definitely help. Gotta keep him calm. He I don't think he likes it very much. So I have minor illusion which I was thinking about using um, for, for something or other. And I also was going to make Mr. Bones disappear as if he burnt away with the fire. I definitely don't know if he's going to like that. Um, I don't even know if he would know that he's invisible. And it wouldn't be for that long. I would know when I'd tell him. Um, and then Mr. Twizzard was going to conjure what looked to be a mummy heart. Um, where Mr. Bones once was standing. Heather, Heather sort of looks up. I, I could create a shower of sparks uh, somewhere if need be, or, or something of that manner. The more sparks, the better. Yeah, we can use that. Just always be doing that. I could also uh, check my spell book. I believe I have some illusion spells. Uh, it's been a while since I've cast them, but I could... I could brush up on that tonight. Could we use the magic missile that explodes before it actually makes contact? 
I don't know if you can remote like detonate a, a magic missile. Like a non-lethal magic missile? Um, I don't have experience with that, but perhaps. Because we definitely use magic missile on our, uh, on our person, you know, on the mummy. I could make cloud of daggers, but the mummy was only temporarily in the cloud of daggers. He, he knew better to then stay in there. Plus, I am going to be playing, you know, and singing at the same time, so I feel like a minor illusion and the invisibility is going to be as much as I'm going to be really able to do. Well, I yeah, can if maybe if finally if, use magic mount. If either of those, I mean... They, they probably both need verbal and semitic components, so hand movements and you would, you would have to stop your playing at that point. Right, well, let me see here. So minor illusion is at will, and it is S and M. So material, I would be using my loot anyway as a focus. Yeah. And then, and then semitic, yeah, so that's, that's the hand movement. So you, you could still be speaking the sort of the ballad or a spoken part of the ballad uh, and just do the, the movements. So pa sort of pause the music as you speak a dramatic portion or something. Yeah, okay. And then, <laughs> and then the invisibility is, con is a verbal, somatic, and material. So... And how are you, you were going to turn Mr. Bones invisible? Yeah, to make it look as though the um, fire had consumed him. That's right. We talked about, like, whether touching something wrapped around him counts or not for the touch. But then I thought we had a solution to that. I was going to have one of his bones in my pocket. That's what it was. Yes, 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 yes. Classic. Like a pinky bone or something like that. <laughs> Something that you wouldn't necessarily notice because he is wrapped in linen. This is a perfect plan. So, and that would be near the end anyway, so I think that I could probably do a quiet muttering. All right. All right. So, yeah, you guys are working out the exact details. It's very exciting. Uh, meanwhile, Fenric, Pelias. You folks are just heading south. Uh, as soon as you, uh, you know, you, you sort of get to the city walls, the gate, the city guards sort of nod at you as you pass through the gates. And you uh, proceed at a, are you pushing the horses or are you riding normally? We should probably push. All right, so you, you, you go out and basically work your horses up to a gallop. Uh, you pass by the markets. Um, very busy today. Uh, lots of uh, people around uh, the sort of, animal market to uh, the one side of the road and the sort of fruits and vegetable market to the other uh, but you continue south um, and if you want to go uh, for two hours south you could get uh, let's call it 18 miles and uh, and then you pull over to the side of the road and look at the compass sounds good okay all right uh, Finric. all right let's check out this compass yeah give me a uh, uh, give me another uh, investigation, I guess, of the compass. Can I help? Yeah, sure, why not? Go for it. Let me know if you can beat a 12. Okay. I can. I got a 13. <laughs> you don't have anything to add to it? Show off. You could see my roll? You just said it's 13. You just said that loud. Oh. Well, yeah. <laughs> I would have added it when I said it. But no, I don't have anything to add. Oh. I have zero investigation. Oh. And we don't all have seven as a minimum that we can add to our rolls here. <laughs> well, my investigation is only three, so it's not one of my strong points. Most of my numbers are zeros. Oh, I'm you like have Aaron's six. Sheet, it's like seven on each of them, or five. Like, what? Are you kidding me? No, it's only on the ones that uh, I have double proficiency in. Like, sleight of hand and perception, performance, and persuasion. Zeros. You have no zeros. 
because I made it that way. I'm partially proficient in at least everything because I'm jack of all trades. At ten zeros. <laughs> ten? Yeah. There's ten things I am not proficient in at all. I have seven. But I have three wands. No, four wands. Um. Well, I have one all right. One. So yeah, you guys. You, you notice that it basically still points to the soap. There's no no discernible distance difference. Okay, so he's very far away from us. Yeah, it seems like it. So, All right. should we go another two hours? Remember, it's going to be four hours back then. Yeah, so you're you're basically at four thirty. It's four thirty right now. Yeah. That would be ten thirty to get back. Well, when I just can't. For copper bandits. Why? Sure. I mean, at, oh, at a certain point, he's so far away that we'd be like, hmm. Can we determine how far away he would at least be by us going, like, where, where we should have been able to detect a movement? Well... Oh, you're going to have to do a little math there, you boy. You will have to do math. I mean, I asked the question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, 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 I mean, Fenrir's soap line is pretty thin. And mm -hmm. it is not, you know, and there's some, there's some just, you know, you put the magnet, the magnet, you put the uh, compass on the ground. To, to, to make it as steady as possible, you know, tap it, tap it a few times to sort of make sure it's loose, and mm. and there really wasn't any discernible difference. Mm. Um. So. Yeah, I mean, we would have to basically judge what the what it would take, how far someone or how close someone would be for it to actually move like a millimeter. So the farther away he is, the less it will move. Right. And it didn't move at all. So he's quite far. Right. Did that tell us like how far though? Could he be like, you know, 10 miles, or does he have to be like 100 miles, or? Well, I would need to know the angle in which the compass needle changed, and I would need to know the distance that you traveled from your initial starting point to your final starting point in order to do the parallax. Right. Then, then I would miles, be... or do they do something weird like? Cubits? It doesn't matter. It's still it's still a percentage. So, so let's so... say let's let's pretend that the needle moved by a millimeter, right? That's and then... not an angle. I need an angle, a degree measurement, or radians even. All right, well, we'll figure that out. But but so let's pretend it moved like slightly. Let's say like, yeah, if it moved like 0.2 degrees, we, we'd have noticed it. So let's call that. Okay, so 0.2 degrees. Let's say it moved 0.2 degrees and we traveled, what, 18, 18 miles. miles? So In... how far would he be if we had traveled 18 miles and it moved 0.2 degrees? All right, so 0.2 degrees, and you said 18 miles? Yeah. So then we d divide the angle by two because we want to make it a right triangle instead of an isosceles triangle. And 0.1 degrees, and so 18 divided by two will also be nine. And we have a right angle there. So the leg of the triangle is going to be Okay, tangent or sine theta, either of them will be fine because for angles less than like one degree, tangent, cosine, and theta are all the same value. So it's essentially theta is approximately equal to your um, the hypotenuse and the long leg are pretty much going to be the same for such a small angle. Mm -hmm. I need a calculator. Hold on one moment. This is hot content right here. Well, I'm a physics expert. 
We're all doing math on our phones. <laughs> Yeah, I calculated as about 200 miles. But you're saying in point two, but like, I mean, you're not, you, like, that's not a. This is the this is the hypothetical. Yeah. I, I, I'm I'm guessing the minimum that I would have. That yeah. it could have moved for me to notice it. With 13. So, <laughs> what we're doing is we're figuring out what the the he's at least this far away. We know that he's further than this amount. So if we had, if we had seen a minimum of 0.2 degree difference, which is what we would feel like is discernible for our eyes, then he would have been this far away if we had seen this 0.2 difference. So we know he's at least further than this, because we haven't seen a difference. Right. Makes sense. I love it. I love it. Did you guys figure it out already? It's more miles. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I have to change this into radians in order to find arc length. Theta in radians is equal to arc length divided by the radius. I'm trying to find radius. So arc length is 9 divided by theta, 0.1 in radians. So. Now I just have to convert 0 0.1 degrees to radians. Tonight's D and D and M. Yeah, and math. <laughs> this is why it's so important to learn math. <laughs> Born magical enemy. Oh my god. The one thing Paul Ruth didn't count on us being able to do. That's right. Trigonometry. <laughs> Sorry, are you guys going two hours further? Well, we don't know yet. We're going to see how far this would be because we want to know if, like, it's only like 200 miles or something. And if we went another two hours, like, he's like, we don't, we would only get another 200 miles out of it. So if it's not really that far, then it's not going to tell us a lot. Nine divided by. Do you guys bring food and stuff? 1.47. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> All right, he's about 5,172 miles away. Yeah, what'd I say? That's about I don't think he's on Centralia. That's, how, yeah, how long, how big is Centralia? We got a scale on there. I'm sure that it's, it's, I don't know. Rounding right. error, but it, it sounds like he's pretty far. He is really far. Further than 5,000 miles away. We also made the assumption that it was 0.2 degrees of a change, right? Yep. Yeah, but we could have we could have detected that. I I my soap line was legit. That's, that's true, huh? three, 360 degrees is the whole circle, of course. So I mean, how big is this compass? Maybe two point inches. Point two is really small, actually. I don't know that we could detect point two. Three hundred and sixty degrees. Divide that by ten times two. That's crazy. Or. Multiple. Let's just put it this way. I did a calculation like this for measuring a tree that was probably about, I don't know, 50 meters away. Yeah. And I was getting, you know, angles of like 12 degrees. Right. And we saw nothing. So he, so how big is Centralia? How, how, how many miles is Centralia? Hold on, hold on. There, there's, yeah. there's a scale in your... In your map. It's about a thousand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's about a thousand across and about maybe a thousand uh, vertically. So you're saying he's five centralias away? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is all this is all like an estimate, but clearly it's of the magnitude that he's really far away. But I, I don't know. Like that across the continent. The he's not next door. He's not in Oxnard. Yeah, he's not in Oxnard. What was your number? Your number was 5,000? Am I going to have to do oh, math now, me too? Well, 5,000 if those numbers were even reasonable. Nine, 
So 18 miles traveled. That does sound pretty And 0.2 degrees. Which is super small. Yeah. It's very, very small. I mean, 0.2 degrees is like arc seconds. Yeah, super small. Cool. So then the other components are definitely going to be huge. For those of you who are not familiar with arc seconds, there are 60 arc seconds in a minute, 60 arc minutes in a degree. I am not familiar with either of those. Hold on a second. So wait, what's the equation? Now I'm now I'm very interested. Oh, I'm just I'm just using um, the arc length. So s is equal to theta times r, where the angle theta is in radians, r is the radius, and s is the arc length. So the arc length is going to be the distance that uh, they traveled. The angle in theta yeah. is what they read on the compass. But it's and not. And then the though. radius it's... is how far away Falrith is. But wait, that's that's is that the angle? Because it would be. That would have been if we could see the Because so, <clears throat> hold on. I just happen to have a whiteboard here. Go whiteboard, go whiteboard, go. Hold on. As long right. as everything is perpendicular, which the radius is perpendicular to the arc length, then it should follow similar angles. All right, so let's let's blow this up a little. <laughs> I thought this is why we had magic, so we didn't have to do math. <laughs> is that the purpose of magic? We don't know why the guy floated. Uh, we just know the magic made him float. Now, Agnes, I'm sure, would not know any of these equations. I'm doing this solely as myself. Is this is this is the definition of metagaming? <laughs> Let's see. Hold on. Let me let me draw some reasonably straight lines here. I thought you were a jack of all trades. I am jack of all trades, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I would be able to do these kind of calculations in my head. Well, I didn't even have calculators. So, so this is we're, we're talking about like, yeah, this is yeah. the compass, right? Yeah. So where where the line that you have not drawn is twelve miles or eighteen miles? Right? Eighteen miles. No, that they that's not true. Well, I sure, but um. No, I this is the this circle is the compass. Okay. Right. No, 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 no. That that circle is Falrith. That circle is Falrith? Yes. Correct, yeah. But no. Because you're taking yes. so so Sean, make that circle in the center look like a stick figure. Just draw two now, points. Just draw at two the, points. At the other end, you'll put the compass. Just put two points. One's Falrith and one's uh Fenric and Polias. Okay. Right. If that is Falrith, then then the, then it's not a triangle. I mean, it is a triangle, sorry, but it's not a uh, equilateral triangle. It's not a right triangle, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you were doing the math? But, but you're saying, oh, they went south? They went due yeah, south. They, went south. they didn't oh, go yeah. along the arc. It should, uh... That's right? why I'm, I'm like, it's... I, I thought, I thought you were doing the... This is a weird estimate, right? It's not like, but, but I feel like it is telling us it's a heck of a long distance. It's like, more than a thousand. Obviously, the fact that it's not let's a right just decide triangle, like... that it's more than a thousand. <laughs> say again. It's more yeah. than a thousand. I can say that with confidence. So okay. Centralia only goes a thousand miles, right? So he's not on Centralia. The width of Centralia is roughly a thousand miles. But we're we're talking he's southwest, yeah, right? We're talking about the hypotenuse. So... No, he's southeast. He's southeast. South, okay, southeast. Wait. So if he's southeast. Down right. He's probably he could be an Allen. And was that Targon? No, Sean just said he's, he's more than a thousand away. Well, he, he's yes, he's probably in South Gorson or Alon. That's that's okay. what you could probably reasonably deduce. All right, so we found him. Let's get him. <laughs> oh, for oh, fun. <laughs> now I've got to do. That, that's homework for next time. Yeah. So that's about a thousand miles. Is that how far south uh, along there is, or course? No, it's, yeah. it's more than that because it's the the hypotenuse. But about yes. Yeah, about. 
Okay, so it's like, how far, how long does it take to get a thousand miles? There's lots, there's lots of stuff in the way. We can't go and as the crow flies there. Yeah, I mean, which, which, which miles method? Miles I mean, your, your, your horse goes 48 miles in a day. A pony or a, or a mule goes 32 miles in a day. Oh, but we can fast forward. Is there, can, there, there, there? In a month and a half. Yeah, well, for the ponies, but it would take us about 20 days. Well, yeah. that's assuming that you're riding on flat ground. You okay. have a mountain range... A desert um, and various other terrain in between. Now you could you could go back to Windmill and you could take the ship. The ship would probably be the fastest way because you would avoid the mountain and the desert. Well, let's just go. Well, fast forward one year. <laughs> and we've done all of this and we're good and we're just like sitting someplace. And like, the world is safe. Oh, Perfect. So so we defeated Falrath. Campaign we completed. We got all the amulets. We, uh... We're just sitting, we're just watching the moon, admiring it in the sky. <laughs> we all now know what a moon is. Uh, and now there's tides. Mm -hmm. This is great. The water level's changing every once in a while. It's so strange. We've got our little parcel of land. You know, we, we just, uh... We just think about, oh, what was it like a year ago when we uh, we didn't know all this was going to work out? Yeah. <laughs> Into your retirement. <laughs> um, oh, my God. Okay, so Falworth is a long distance away. If the best way to get to him would be via the boat, I kind of feel like if we're going to get the boat for something, we would go, go to get the other amulet. Well, we're in a boat. We're not doing it without everyone else, so... And we're not getting Falworth without everyone else because it's probably not great for it to be the two of us. There is right. a southern. Oh, you're talking to me right now. There yeah. is there oh. is a southern water route that you could take the coastal kingdoms down to Swabia, up between Alan and Swabia, into the Central Sea, and then further up the river to Lucknow. That is a way of getting to the Library of, Com of Parmakoa, but. Oh. Well, I don't know. I think that the uh, uh, the circus is tomorrow, so we can watch the circus, and then we should go either find Falrith or get our ship or get an amulet. Okay. Well, let's uh, we'll head back to town now and discuss with the other guys. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So right. we'll head yeah, back to town. General idea of where he is. So that's cool. Right, yeah. So you guys are riding back victorious. <clears throat> um, even uh, the compass telling us nothing helped us a lot. That's true. That's that is that is that is the truth. Um, so you guys would be getting back. You didn't go the extra two. So it would just be like 6.30 when you were getting back. A little past. We had to do some math when we were there on the ground. Sure, so. sure, sure, of course. We did it. It was like a half hour of math. All, all, <laughs> the, all the monk and high elf training. Uh, ascending, stoning. Uh, yep, okay. Um, so yeah, the, uh, the sun's not, not quite. It's basically the golden hour uh, when you get back to the, uh, to the city walls. Uh, I'll be going there. And uh, your horses are a bit tuckered, um, uh, well lathered, as you enter. Um, what would you like to do? Uh, find the other guys. All right. Yeah, let's tuck the horses in, give them their carrots. All right, so you guys, uh, now it has been four hours, so uh, Twizzard, Mr. Bones, finished on Agnes. Are you hanging out at... The Leowin Estate, or you... Ooh, or... does she have free booze and food? Yeah, it depends on if she invites us for dinner. Otherwise, we'll head back to the Duchess, I guess. She Pretty definitely... She definitely yeah, invites... maybe I'll try to befriend Heather some more. She definitely invites you for dinner. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. How do you... Uh... Uh, I guess while you're waiting, or after, after you're done, let's say that after you're done... Um... 
with your practicing, uh, you head sort of out of that room, and uh, and uh, Lady uh, Norka Lewin, you, you hear some piano music playing. Uh, she's sort of in this uh, in this sitting room over here. You guys go in there. The Lego pieces are a little bigger than the whatever. Yeah, a Lego piece is like four feet wide, so scale's not exactly right, but that's fine. Um, you guys sort of take some seats in the sitting room here, doing a little chatting maybe. Um, Heather seems uh, enamored with the piano playing. Um, yeah, you're just having a nice, uh, nice dillic, nice uh, dillic afternoon. Dillic is so much nicer than dull. <laughs> nice dillic. Though I can't say that dillic was completely. Hi, dillic. Uh huh. Yeah, there was some, some rough patches. A bit on get through. I get yeah. it. <laughs> and then at, uh, at one point, you know, it gets a little later, and uh, Lady Layla, will you be staying for dinner? Oh, um, if you would like for us to join you for dinner, I think we'd be very happy to stay. Probably better than what we had yesterday. Butter and crackers. <laughs> ah, well, Well, that yes. was your breakfast yesterday. Oh, was that breakfast? I can guarantee it'll be better than that. All right. Heather, be a dear and uh, see about the dinner. And Heather sort of uh, leaves the room and uh, goes across the hall into this other room. Um, yes, yes, let's, uh, will you be, uh, needing any other supplies for your performance? Um, do you happen to have any kind of old linen that you wouldn't mind us, uh, making into a mummy costume? Costume. Oh, um, I think I might have an old a dress. Um... Would you like to come with me and look around? Sure. I mean, something that's, you know, seen, you know, the end of its life and it's really not worth, you know, keeping anymore. It's it's really meant for rags, so, you know, essentially. You'd wear it if you were a mummy. Of course. Yes. Uh, I, I, come with me, Agnes. So she sort of leads you out. Uh, and and I can some... certainly make a costume. That's what I do. Yep. Uh, and there's sort of these two staircases. She leads you up this one. See one. You probably could have kept those figurines there. Just nope. Slid that away. Nope. Scene wipe. I said scene wipe. <laughs> <laughs> Once you say scene wipe. That's scene wipe. Can't Gone. Go can't go back. And uh, so she leads you up. Oh no! <laughs> Wait, where'd your legs go? Here they are. I lost my legs. Too harsh of a scene wipe. No, uh, Lady Norfell did. Oh. Uh, so she leads you up these stairs, and you're in another sort of room, and uh, there's some uh, some drawers over on a wall, and she sort of looks through there, uh, and you're in this room, and there's some plants. There's a big statue over there. Uh, another fireplace, and there's another door uh, leading into a room over there that's closed. And she sort of holds up this old white sheet, and uh, she's like, "Well, something like this, do?" Oh, I think that would be perfect. Um, Wonderful. I I might need uh, some additional because Mr. Bones is so large, but because he is just a skeleton, it's not like we have to wrap him up completely. We could probably have some of his his bones kind of peeking through, I think that would probably be okay. Well, you you let me know and I will see what I can do if you need more. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay it out and I'm gonna start kind of measuring out like how wide I should make certain strips so I can get an idea of how many I'll be able to get and approximately, I know that Mr. Oni Boney is about nine feet tall, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, a little less, but yeah. So then I should I should be able to figure out that I would need to get strips 
that would wrap around a skeleton and and cover the majority of that nine feet. So. Oh man, we're gonna do more math. No. No, I'm not actually gonna do the math. I'm not gonna consider Oni or Oni Boni as a cylindrical shaped object, because usually we assume a sphere. <laughs> assume a spherical cow, exactly. or a spherical chicken. But Oni Boni would probably be more of a cylindrical shape. All right, so you guys are working on that upstairs. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Twizzard, you're sort of looking in the hall and you see uh, you see uh, these trays of food uh, just sort of hovering past. Uh, oh, out yeah. Of, out of the kitchen and into the dining room. I'm following those. All right. Yep, you follow uh, into the dining room. And the, uh, the unseen servants, as it were, start to uh, set the table. Nice. And soon Agnes and Lady Norfil come down. Uh, Heather and there's Finn is there. Mr. Bones is there. It's a good time. And yeah, you guys you guys get back right around dinner, I guess. Six thirty? Seven? Six thirty seven? I need sixty two feet. A little uh, little dusty, a little smelly, uh, but you stable the horses. Um, and when you stable the horses, you don't notice anyone else around the stable. Uh, you see the other pony and mule there, of course. Uh, ponies and mule. Uh, and you uh, you knock. Um, no. Uh, Twizzard and Agnes sort of notice Heather go out the door, um, and sure enough comes back with uh, slice and thinner. You guys enjoy a nice dinner, courtesy of Lady Norfell and Heather. No, oh, it's good. Good grub, thanks. Very enjoyable. Much thanks. Well, I cannot wait for tomorrow. I have a few more things to set up, but I think this will be a very, very successful party. I hope. I hope so. Now, um, Lady Norfil, I believe that it's that um, Pelias and uh, Finric here have other things that they need to attend to with the the religious area of town. So um, they probably will not be attending tomorrow night, unfortunately. Uh, so. Unless they want to. Yeah, they might be able to, you know, get out of their engagements earlier than they expect, but I wouldn't wouldn't expect them to show up tomorrow. Uh, I certainly understand. So he's sending stone. See, you can do whatever you need to do now. And I'll send stone back. Maybe since the heads of the towers are going to be there, maybe we should take this advantage to go steal that stuff. It's just going to be you and Fenric, though. Still don't have much more of a plan than that. <laughs> well, maybe that's all we need. What do you think, Ben? We're sending stoning, right? Yes. Yes. Well, the ultimate, the ultimate point of stealing those things is going to try to get the information on who Finistol is working for, or allegiant to. Uh -huh. Who does number two? So is it worth the risk? I mean, it's also going to get us some gold or something, right? Like, he's going to pay us. And we need that gold. Unless he pays us in information. That would suck. Well, we could probably negotiate for how we want to get paid. I need a box for my amulet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Seeming a little on the fence. I am a little on the fence. If it's just the, the head of the house, mm -hmm. that's like one wizard down. Right, and there's still the adepts that are there. They're not going to your show? No, just the Shogrins. And, and they're a step below the adepts. Yeah, and it doesn't seem to be that 
they, well, at least the Shogrins don't live in the tower. I don't know about the adepts. Mm. But there will definitely be people probably in the tower when you want to go. Okay. That's fine. If we're over it, we don't need to. We'll just do our thing. Okay. I'm sure we can find some trouble to get into. <laughs> yeah, I'll ask, uh, I'll, remind me to ask, um, my, uh, god, Mistra, to see if she, what she thinks about Finistral. Mm. Before I go to bed. Cool. Well, it's about decisions you're going to make. Like, should you continue to trust her versus... Is this plan a good idea? No, he, well, he's not got necessarily. His... It, it's got to be yes, no, or no. Like, he's got his new or... spell. Yeah, I've got I've got a more advanced spell oh. where I, I can get a, a little bit more answer from him. But you're right; it does have to be based on something coming up. So I I think do you trust her, or should I trust her moving forward? I think is you still ask a, good a, a single question concerning a specific goal, event, or activity to occur within seven days. So should I trust her in the upcoming trip? Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that I am actually going to call it a night. I am. All right. I am spent. So we will pick things up uh, on DePaul, the day of the party. Oh, well, if, if we're going to bed, can I just ask now then? Sure. I want to do it before I lose my spell slot. Yeah, yeah of course. Ooh. So, uh, use it or I'll lose it. it. <laughs> you don't lose it. Yeah, use it or waste it. Well, I get a long rest, so yeah, I'll, I can use it again tomorrow. Exactly. So, um, do I need the bone? I forget. I think I need the femur. You need Mr. Bones' femur? Yeah. All right, that's fine. I need to recast that anyway before we go to bed as well. All right. Are um, you guys do? Are you guys doing this back at the Duchess in your room? I assume. Yeah. I'm doing in the living room here. <laughs> All right, so you guys are in your hotel room then. Yeah. So I'll go ahead and ask, um, do, uh, uh, so can I trust, or can we trust Finistrel on the upcoming mission? On the upcoming, What's the upcoming mission? mission? Uh, probably finding Falrath. Oh, okay. So say it again. So, can I, can we trust Finistrel on the upcoming mission in finding Falrath? All right. Can we trust Finistrel on the upcoming mission? Um. All right. So. <laughs> oh man. Um, should have given this more thought. So okay, so you're 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 commuting. Uh, so this is different than 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 augury. So you so remember the reply can be a short phrase, a cryptic rhyme, or an omen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And this is Mistra, the goddess of magic. If you want to answer me next time, that's fine. I just wanted to use the spell. Yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah, let me think about how Mistra would communicate with her, with her clerics. All right. Yeah. To be continued on the answer. All right. That sounds good. I love it. All right, folks. Thank you so much for playing, uh, and thank you for watching. And we will see you next Friday for the next B and D Live.